Good evening, everybody. Simon here, Explosive Action, with my 1st of May DVD, VHS, and Blu-ray update. Got a mix of formats and a mix of genres this time, as usual. And we're just looking at one of my favorite collections in front of me here right now. It's the Michael, Dudadop, Michael Dudikoff Presents Action Adventure Theatre Collection. These are fantastic little tapes. Nothing to do with the update, but they make a nice backdrop. And first cab off the rank are the VHS, just two. This is hard to die. Look at that amazing colour. It's actually got uh, a bit of foil there, sort of embossed foil, which is really cool. Um, this is a Jim Winorski film and is on DVD, but that DVD can only be afforded by the richest kings of Europe. I don't know why it's so expensive. It's been out of print for a while, I guess. Um, Region 1, and that's the only one I know of. So this is the Home Cinema Group VHS. And that DVD is full screen anyway, so not really losing much. Nice condition, this one. And uh, not, not very easy to find this tape. Not easy to find any edition of this film at this point, anyway. So as it says, uh, it is the female version of Die Hard. That uh, isn't really correct, but, you know, we'll just uh, make sure we take a closer look to uh, be sure that uh, we're looking at uh, the right thing and, uh, oh, oh dear, sorry, whoops. Anyway, that's hard to die. And the next one is Singapore Harbour, USA. This is an obscure film. Um, it is on IMDb. It has a handful of ratings. Um, I don't think anybody knows about this damn thing. Oh, I got this in a trade. It's yeah, it's it's a rare one. It is very low budget. It's like uh, I guess the quality is similar to something like Ghetto Blaster, but unfortunately nowhere near as fun. Um, on Virgin Video, matching case, so good condition tape. But um, yeah, so I watched the film. It's basically uh, this bloke and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name doesn't really matter a great deal, but these two guys that are uh, private detective partners and uh, they get on a, a strange case that involves, there's like a, a white power Nazi, neo-Nazi guy and his massive arsenal of weapons. He's supposed to be a good guy, I think. Uh, there's a drug cartel, there's some real cliched uh, Italian mob boss kind of guys. It's played more like a really stupid comedy, um, but it's got, you know, a couple of average gunfights and uh, one pretty cool scene where a truck runs over, uh, this guy hits him head first and his head just explodes like scanners. That's probably where all the money for this film went. Anywho, um, yeah, not great, but it's certainly interesting to see something that is that rare. So Singapore Harbour, USA. Next up's the DVDs, and the first one is The Barn. This is a modern slasher. Been out for a couple of months now, I think. Um, very obviously, as you can tell by the case, and the intentionally faded um, artwork here with uh, fake stickers, intentionally designed to be a homage to 80s slasher films. Now, I've not had a chance to check this one out yet. I have heard um, many good things about this one, so um, I will be checking it out soon. Two discs, film, um, and what was this one? The soundtrack, and oh, that's right, they made a 8-bit video game, which I should probably check out, hopefully it'll work on my Mac. Um, anyway, that's The Barn, um, does look pretty cool. You can buy it direct, um, just search for you know, The Barn movie, or Diabolic's got it, uh, Diabolic DVD, that's probably the two best places to get it, so I'll be checking that out soon. Next one is Absolute Zero, and this was one of those cheap pickups I just sort of tripped over one day, starring Jeff Fay. That's about the only reason I picked it up. Um, it's a very, very cheap, if not made for sci-fi channel, then, you know, it's uh, of the same caliber, uh, science fiction um, disaster film with some really, really bad science, like some of the worst. I don't I don't go into these things expecting quality science, but man, there's some shockers in this. Basically, the um, Earth's magnetic field has some reason going to uh, 
reverse, and for whatever reason, that means that um, areas of the planet are going to reach absolute zero temperature, which is, uh, I think, minus 273 degrees Celsius, or minus 400 and something Fahrenheit. Um, and uh, we see some of that on the screen, and it pretty much amounts to a snowstorm. If you know anything about absolute zero, that's when atoms stop moving, so you don't have a snow... Anyway, I'm overthinking that crap. It was not as bad as you think, <laughs> but it wasn't boring, I'll give it that. Now, the next ones, I was really, really lucky. Picked up uh, five... Uh, long out of print Hong Kong Legends uh, releases. These are of course X rentals. You can see the sticker, but um, I'm happy to get these in any way that I could. Um, this is the Postman Fights Back, uh, Chow Yun Fat film. None of these I've well actually only one of these I've managed to see yet. This is not one of them. Good thing about the HKLs is that they're always really great transfers. A lot of love put into them. A lot of uh, usually cool extras. I mean, trailers, interviews dual languages, audio commentaries. That's like every release they do has got lots of good stuff on it. So um, that's The Postman Fights Back. Don't know much about that one yet. Uh, the new Dragon Gate Inn. Another deleted one. This is a uh, Sue Hark film. I think I've said his name right. This one certainly looks pretty cool. Uh, Flaming Brothers. Another Chow Yun Fat. As I said, I haven't had a chance to watch any of these except for one. Hong Kong 1941, another Chow Yun Fat. This is more of a drama war film, I think. Uh, but that's alright, give that a go. And this is the one that I've managed to see. Really happy. This is damn hard to find the Australian edition, like insanely hard. Winners and Sinners, uh, the first of the three um, uh, My Lucky Stars trilogy um, with Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung and a whole host of others. It's a, uh, hmm, I won't say light action, but a medium action comedy film with uh, Jackie Chan as policeman and everyone else as criminals. Um, and lots of fun capers and uh, Jackie Chan doing, doing a lot of his... Uh, Climbing on the top of moving cars and uh, Sammo Hung doing a lot of fast kicks and fights. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Winners and Sinners, I really enjoyed this one. Um, that's to be followed with My Lucky Stars, which unfortunately I do not have. But the third one is Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars. Haven't checked this one out yet. Sammo Hung, Jackie Chan, Yuan Bao. This one is meant to be actually probably one of the better ones of the, the three. More action and less comedy, from what I understand. So, uh, thankfully, the the person that I acquired these X rentals from uh, did me a solid and gave me a DVD-R of uh, the middle film, so I can at least watch it. Hopefully, one day I will find uh, the Australian release of My Lucky Stars, because that would be a grand, grand thing. And lastly, the Blu-rays. The first one on this stack is the latest Steven Seagal. End of a gun, or as one of my friends so cruelly put it, end of a ham sandwich. Ah, Seagal. I get endless fun out of uh, his modern films. Even when uh, he spends a lot of them... Hilariously, he does spend some of these latest films just sitting down. If you uh, read my review for um, his Sniper film, unrelated to uh, the other series of Sniper films, he did spend three quarters of that film in a chair which was just hysterical, but um, I still have a lot of fun watching these things. A lot of the time because of uh, everyone else in the film. Um, there can be some decent action set pieces and they move at a fair clip and then you get the hilarity of Mr. Seagal sitting in a chair and he somehow still gets a lady. But anyway, end of a gun. I'll be checking that one out soon. Wild Beasts. Uh, it's been out for a little while now, this one from uh, Severin. Nice upgrade. I really like this film. The uh, zoo animals that drink from contaminated water that's been contaminated with uh, uh, PCP and the acid-like substances. And of course all things go amok. Wild Beasts. I rate that film. 
Fright Night, the new uh, Eureka UK, where's the thing, Eureka UK release, 4K Master, I haven't checked it out yet, presumably it's going to be similar to the uh, re-release edition that Twilight Time did, Jesus, things had a lot of releases in the last three years, um, but uh, I've heard that the quality of this one is actually really cool, and uh, got multiple discs, movie on Blu-ray and DVD, bunch of features, like a real truckload of features, I'm not a big features guy, but you know, when they're there, so this will probably be a definitive enough addition for me for some time, some time ahead, I didn't get the still book, I uh, don't know if I regret it or not, but I'll be happy with that, next one, Cocaine Wars, dig that cover, it is unfortunately the best thing about the film, it's not a bad film, it's just a bit slow, uh, 80s action film that has gone from VHS to Blu-ray, missing DVD entirely, uh, thanks to Code Red. But, jeez, that cover. Seriously, I could just stare at it all day. But, uh, yeah, it's... Um, could have used some editing and uh, a bit more action, to be honest, but, uh, yeah, Cocaine Wars. Next one, Beyond the Door. Few people have shown this one so far. Uh, the latest Code Red, one of the latest ones, um, through uh, Ronan Films. Uh, but uh, I got this one and Cocaine Wars from Diabolic, who uh, not at the time didn't have them on the store. But um, the thing about that is, uh, while they don't advertise them due to some kind of 30 day embargo that Ronan Flicks is putting on Diabolic, I don't know why. You just ask, uh, you just ask the uh, the owner Jesse, and he will sell them to you anyway. So that's how I got this one. Beyond the door, nice slipcase, which is a, a first, I think, for Code Red. The uh, poster art below it looks really good. The print is really cool, and the film, of course, is lots of fun. Upgrading the uh, Code Red DVD from uh, some some many years ago, one of their first DVDs, I think. Nice upgrade there. As is also uh, Delirium. This is not the Code Red. I went for the 88 films uh, in this instance. Look at them boobies. Boobies, boobies, boobies. Le photo de guerre. Ah, whatever. I'm not going to say it right. That weird scene that everybody knows. It was very strange that uh, Code Red put that on their cover. I far prefer this cover. So, yep, you know, 80 Charlo from Lamberto Barber. Good fun film. Delirium. The next from the Vestron line. I was so happy they announced this one. The Gate. Everyone knows The Gate. Everyone loves The Gate. One of the 80s films. Oh, I'm not going to pull that out. One of the 80s films that really deserves its praise. Uh, the sequel's not bad. Only on uh, a full screen Canadian DVD, which I've got somewhere in my shelves. Um, hopefully that gets a upgrade one day too. And... Um, yeah, really cool to finally have the gate on Blu-ray. Awesome 80s fun. As is the Wishmaster collection. Um, or at least the first two films. I don't remember three and four very much. Um, I rewatched one. The print is amazing. Really done a good number on this. Uh, and uh, the price is a bit more than the other other um, Vestron releases. But, you know, you do get four films. And I got it, um, I think, for... In the end, about 40 Australian through Diabolic, which, you know, for the four films and a slipcase on Blu-ray, I'm fine with that. That's fine. Next up, just come out here, local release of The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Uh, this is from Umbrella. Has a reverse cover, as you can see. Doesn't have the uh, ratings advice on the front, which is pretty cool. And uh, haven't checked it out yet, but um, it's been getting quite the praise, this one. And uh, I like it when films are quite short 86 minutes that's that's the length of a horror film for me 86 minutes perfect length for a horror film so i will check out the autopsy of jane doe quite shortly completing a trilogy here the purge election year i found this one at a cash converters for a fiver which is the price i wanted to pay i really enjoyed the first film most people say that they didn't enjoy the first one they just liked the sequels i thought the first one was good quite good quality film and uh, this is part three so i'll check that out soon next up star raiders 
new Casper Van Dien um, science fiction thing. Adventures of a Saber Rain. Star Raiders Adventures of Saber Rain. I think this has been coming for quite some time. It is a very independent film. And uh, I swear it didn't say this when I originally ordered, but I went back and checked and it says it now. Um, this is a BDR, which probably wouldn't have stopped me ordering anyway, but, you know, it's a slight disappointment to get a BDR when I wasn't expecting one. It's also a fat case, which doesn't bother me, but for typical Region A releases, that's odd to have a Region B sized case. Star Raiders, The Adventures of Saber Rain. I expect craptacular science fiction action in this one, and I'd better get it. Next one, another in jumping from VHS to Blu-ray and skipping DVD is Demented. And it is quite a demented film. I haven't watched it since my old tape about 10 years ago. Don't remember a great deal about it, except for it was quite demented. Uh, thanks to Shout Factory, who have done a restoration on this one. And uh, got a nice widescreen print with a DTS HD mono audio. Hopefully preserving how it was meant to be seen. Nice piece of trashy exploitation from the 80s. Demented. Next one. What a world we live in when PM Entertainment films are on Blu-ray. Hologram Man. This is a German blue. And uh, I wasn't planning on picking up many of the releases from this company. They do tend to do a bit of uh, noise filtering that uh, can render the video a bit wax dummy-ish, but uh, I heard the Hologram Man was actually relatively untouched, so... Uh, and of course it's in, you know, widescreen, and uh, anything's better than my crappy old full-screen DVD. Good fun Joe Lara film uh, from... Uh, I think it might be like 1990. No date on the back, I don't think. Late, very late 80s, or if not 1990. Uh, Hologram Man. Unbelievable this is the kind of thing that uh, is getting an upgrade these days, but I'm very happy for that. Speaking of, oh my god. T-Force on a German Blu-ray digibook. The things that get digibooks these days. Another PM Entertainment film. Good science fiction action here. Um, with more Jack Scalia. You can see him on the front there. There's two different covers. Uh, the one I was able to obtain is this. The other one has uh, just the team and it's more of a blue background. And um, not the one I was able to attain, but anyway, I'm happy with this. This is limited 358 of 666. How satanic is that? And you get um, probably a bunch of things, features that I can't watch because they're in German. Uh, there's a trailer. We'll see what that's in. But geez, the inside. Look at this. Nice disc there. Booklet with the cover art that is shown on the uh, American DVD. Some posters, some text I can't read, some photos, more posters. DVD edition. Oops. Well, that's not good. That's all right. She'll glue back in. I don't mind. T-Force on Blu-ray, and I've already managed to give away what my final one is. I could see that I was doing that just then. Shoot Fighter 1 and 2 Blu-ray Metal Pack Edition. This was an effort to get. Um, wow. The things that you can get on disc these days, just wow. And try and open this. There we go. Turn it around. So, you get uh, the booklet for the films, behind the scenes stuff, and uh, four discs, Blu-ray, Blu-ray, DVD, and DVD, which is really cool. There is a media book edition as well, which has the exact same discs and a bigger booklet, I think, but um, this was slightly cheaper and easier for me to get. Uh, uncut. HD, proper HD, no DNR, uh, widescreen, perfect. And I have to thank uh, Extra the Mutilator for doing the groundwork on this one. He picked up the um, media book some time ago and I made it my mission to get it. 
then I discovered that this existed and it was proving really hard to get a copy for a reasonable price sent to Australia and thankfully and I've got a big big props out to Diabolic DVD again when I asked them if they could get it they said they could and from their German distributor who they deal with all the time they got it in for me and their price was 40 US which was excellent for this and um, chucked it in with uh, Beyond the Door and Cocaine Wars and uh, The Barn and made a bit of an order out of it. So very happy to get Shoot Fighter 1 and 2 in this really awesome uncut Blu-ray metal pack from Germany. And that is this update for May the 1st. And uh, hope you all enjoyed. See you at the next one.